The Cannes Lions International Festival of Creativity is in its 60th year and it's bigger and better than ever before. Cannes 2013 hosts nearly 12,000 delegates from more than 90 countries. Nearly 36,000 pieces of work were submitted for this year's prizes and the best of those will be taking home one of the prestigious Cannes Lion. I used to view it as a, a celebration and a party for the creative people, which I never begrudged because creativity is so pivotal to our business, but I never thought I was invited or, or saw it as relevant really to, to put onto my calendar. And it was probably Jim Stengel actually, who, t who first a few years ago took his senior team at P&G and said, you know what, we're going to make this part of how we inject creativity into our business. I came for my first time 10 years ago and I brought P&G and we were the first client to come here en masse. And we came here to raise our standards. And at that time it was a creative festival. Now it's clients, partners, agencies, media companies. It's the best marketing creativity festival in the world. So right now it's much more about thought leadership. It's much more about partnerships. It's, it's still about creativity. It's still about big ideas. But to me it's far more effective because we have everyone in the industry here. So what are the big themes of CAN 2013 and how will they affect you, the next generation of global marketing executives? We asked media leaders at the top of their game what they thought the big themes were this year. I think that the CMO actually can't be focused on the pace of technology change. They actually have to go back to what they've always known, which is it's all about people. There's a finite limit to what you can do in terms of reducing cost, whereas at least until you get to 100% market share, it's infinite what you can do on the revenue side. And I think we've lost, we've lost sight of that. I think it's crazy to think that you can have a point of view on social media and you're not actually living social media as an individual 24 hours a day. So what is everyone talking about this week? In session and along the Quasette, the conversation has centered around storytelling, the relationship between technology and creativity, and how the new world will mean more engagement between the consumer and the brand. If there is one phrase that came up time and again, it was big data. But what does it actually mean? And why are these two simple words, which don't even warrant their own lion, causing such a fuss? And it's our ability to adapt to data and to create and distribute content in real time that will define success for this generation. For Formula One, it's all about data, and it's about the speed of action and reaction to that data. For both the individual driver and for the company, it really is a matter of life and death in terms of your trust and the feedback that you get from data and the actions you take as a result of that. Now, we looked at the data when we pulled it last week and said, what seems to be the difference between the answers given by the winners, because we look at how successful the companies are, versus the losers? Because it's interesting to see if they give different answers. And they, on trends, only do on one point, big data. When we ask people, what are the big trends that are shaping the way you develop marketing strategy? 30% higher response on big data in the top three trends, compared to the people that are losing. In other words, overperformers are thinking more about big data. So nothing says that you're a winner more than embracing big data. However, the volume and velocity of information means that understanding how to manage it is at an all-time premium. So where does this leave the traditional CMO, someone expected to focus on the big idea rather than the bottom line? Will CMOs and CIOs come closer together? Yes. Who will emerge? Will one be more important than the other? I don't know. I mean, it may well be that we'll put, the, 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 the two of them will be put together in one, you know, a CMO will become increasingly data driven, a CIO will become increasingly marketing driven, and we'll see a fusion of the two. I don't know, I'm not clever enough to figure out. All I know is that we are doing different things to what we used to do, and our competitive set is also shifting. 
I think the new skill set for CMOs that we're seeing increasingly important is the importance of data and understanding actually the power of using technology and data segmentation to deliver those stories from the brand to the relevant audiences and actually embracing that. So I actually like to think the role of the CMO is a combination of a CTO or a CIO and the more traditional CMO coming together and really a blending of all of those skill sets. So I don't think there's ever been a better time to actually be a CMO. Ahead of CAN, the role of the CMO was increasingly seen as outdated. Some even foresaw its imminent demise. But after a week at the festival, it appears that the very opposite is true. I think the successful CMO of today, and increasingly the successful CMO of tomorrow, is a CMO that actually knows when to let go, when to let the creativity of consumers take over, when to let the voice of consumers take over, and actually understand that actually a job of a CMO now is just to inspire our audiences all around the world to engage and create and uh, take the conversation on and own it for themselves. I think the role of a CMO is changing pretty dramatically, but I think the one thing that is going to be consistent uh, through the last several decades and going forward is that CMOs have to have a love of brands. Um, Mark Pritchard recently said, we have fallen in love with technology, we need to fall back in love with ideas. And at the end of the day, the CMO represents the essence of a brand and they need to be really clear about how that brand comes to life through great creative. In many ways, what we're trying to do is the same as when Arthur was running the brewery in the 18th century. You know, we're, we make nice drinks and we want people to fall in love with them. And it doesn't matter how much data you've got, you've still got to make somebody fall in love. And brilliance requires leaps of conviction. Um, so big data is important, but it's not the whole story by any means, in my view. This brave new world of endless data brings with it greater responsibilities. The outcry over the behaviour of the US National Security Agency in recent weeks suggests a debate must be had about the social and political implications of this data mining among business as well as government. I think PRISM and what's happening in the United States um, will will have a very significant imp impact. I think it is, uh, use the trite phrase, game-changing. I think it will alter people's views on privacy. I don't know, it's, it's so confusing. The Snowden thing is beyond belief. How old is he, 22? Ha and he had access to that and could release it? Wow. Does that speak well for our security or what? We need, we need to behave authentically with consumers and we need to make sure they know what we're doing with their data. That's my personal view. And sometimes that creates complexity. Um, but we need to front up to it because in the end, if we've got data about people and we intend to use it, then we, we need to get their permission to do that. Um, so no, I think it is a big issue for governments, for the tech companies, for client companies. And we need to work together on making sure that we, we secure people's trust in what we're doing with their data. There are many other issues which have loomed large this week, and although they may be more familiar, they continue to be relevant. People are increasingly questioning you know, the investment in television, its yield, particularly as new media supposedly is more easily measurable. The, the captive audience is um, you know, on its way out. The captive audience is dying slowly and steadily, and we all know it. Like We know when we're watching TV, we're also using a second screen. We know that, that print is, is declining in circulations in certain areas. We know those things, and, and people are going to have a lot more choice with what they do with their time. Every minute of their time, they're going to have a, a whole host of options available to them. So you've got to find some way to engage them and make them feel personally like it's a part of who they are. And I, I think the coronation, I, I couldn't help but think back to the, the royal wedding as a thing that people who had no connection to the monarchy felt personally connected to that event and, and something there is something about these events and these pieces um, and how can we do that with media? How can we do that with content? Look, this campaign was never a sure thing, but the risk did pay off. Without the constraints of a 30-second spot, we're able to tell an authentic and inspiring story. And the best part is because many of the viewers ended up subscribing to our channel, our conversation about real beauty continues even today. No one is underestimating the growing importance of mobile and social and many other platforms, but the answer seems to be doing more of everything. The 
dramatic difference that uh, digital and technology is making to communication is, to be honest, sometimes it's quite exhausting. Every time you turn around, there is a different tech platform or social network that can add value to the conversation that you're trying to create with consumers all over the world. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, the first global campaign that I worked on was the Beijing Olympics. And in terms of global content, we produced 12 pieces of content, film, out of home, shopper marketing kit. Four years later, the London Olympics, the global content that we produced was over 250 different pieces of content. Everything from uh, social network frameworks, from music, from pop promos, documentaries, 30-second uh, TV ads, out of home, visual design uh, systems, uh, merchandising. So in just four years, from 12 pieces of content to 250 pieces of content. And when I look forward, the content needs are just going to continue to increase exponentially. So um, yeah, it is more complex now than ever before. I think developing a proper content plan that is going to exploit all of these different digital and technology platforms. But at the same time, it's so much more interesting because the voice of the consumer and the creativity of the consumer can be enhanced throughout all of these um, different uh, technology services. There has been lots to talk about at Cannes this year and plenty to enjoy. Whether that is the success of Grand Prix winners, the thought-provoking presentations, or simply the pleasure of meeting new and old friends and colleagues. We have seen dramatic change in the industry over the past 10 years, and the only thing that's certain is that everything will continue to change. Who knows what the future holds? Well, I think the key themes um, will be, still be the same. Simple ideas executed with flair. One of the things I have noticed that's changed is the, is the global breadth of the um, submissions. And I think that will continue to move at a pace. I think we'll continue to see integration. Um, I think we'll continue to see fantastic uh, submissions from non-for-profit organisations. Um, I'm not sure I can crystal ball to say what will be different. Um, we will have cracked privacy. We will have moved from rhetoric to reality on what big data really means, I think. Um, and I hope we're still talking about ideas that blow the socks off people, because that's in the end why we're here. I think the CMO of the future looks a lot like Leonardo da Vinci. The CMO of the future has to be a wonderful scientist and a wonderful artist. They have to be able to, to be comfortable with creativity and innovation and ambiguity and they also have to be really comfortable with all the possibilities we now have with big data, the computing power, and the infinite amount of information we have. We can almost answer any question. So to me, this is the most wonderful field to be in right now. It has so much more opportunity. To me, marketing and branding is where businesses are transformed. So art, science, and human development, that's the CMO of the future. Guardian News and Media is the official UK representative of the Cannes Lions International Festival of Creativity.